So in image classifications, we're trying to identify the main objects on the image. Usually we assume this image only contains a single object, a large one. And but for object detections, we're trying to grab all these interesting objects in a single image. So here we have two dogs, one cat. Besides, we know what objects we have. We also want to know the location of these objects. So here, uh, we using a rectangle uh, tangle, uh, boxes here. It's called bounding box to define where the object it is. Okay, so this is in reality, uh, especially interested by self-driving cars. You want to take a picture of the, on the street and trying to identify all the cars. Um, you see the, there's a person, the bicycle, and they actually they identify, identify two bicycles here, um, also a traffic light. So this is the interesting object we are interested in. Cars, humans, um, traffic light. And there are, there's other objects we are not so interested in, especially for self-driving cars. So uh, we only identify a few objects. But you can see that it's actually pretty hard. First of all, the traffic light is not so easy to identify, even by human. Also, there's, they, they find a car behind the truck. Uh, for human, it's also pretty hard to notif uh, notice that. So, well, you can see that originally, how to label the data set. Let's think about the labeling. Before you see an image, you know the, the object here. But now, you give a labeler or yourself, that's the kind of image you want to cross a lot of things in the image, and pretty hard. Uh, especially the some small cars, some small things, traffic light. Um, so labeling the object detection is pretty hard. So also make the training much harder. In reality, well, you not give a state images. You just give a video. If it, the car is driving on the street, you want to continuous to identify all these uh, objects in the image. So which means we care about throughput. Uh, especially if you run on the car, this car you want to, like the car you don't, you don't want to have very powerful GPUs because you burn uh, your gas or like a lot of, you burn your money actually, and it makes the car very hot. You cannot make the car very hot. Um, and then you need to have air conditioning in the heart question. Isn't the GPU most interested in training for people? Both training and inference are pretty efficient for GPUs. Um, um, once the network is big enough. So if you put a GPU on the car, you have a temperature problem. Um, if you want to reduce the temperature, you need air condition to eat your more gas. Um, but if you don't care about the temperature, the GPU will burn out and the self driving at the middle of the road is just burned out and no, no output you have. So which means object detection is much harder. You need to care about the inference speed uh, very much. Okay. Okay. Let's look, start with the basic concept. It's a box, uh, boxes, the bounding box and the anchor boxes. So this is a new concept um, we have from image classification. So bounding box, you can it defined by a, a rectangle. Uh, you can well the reason. Well, the reason why you have such thing, I don't know, you can have a cycle as, uh, circle as well. Uh, even circle is even simpler. You know. <laughs> but here, a bounded box can be defined by four numbers. So one, you, for example, you can do by top left x, top left y, bottom right x, bottom right y. So for example, in this image, um, the origin is on the uh, top left, so zero zero is on the top left. You can see that we can define this bounded box by uh, six, the x-axis is 60 and the y is 45, and also the uh, right bottom ones. Okay. On the other hand, you can also define by top left x, top right y, the width of the bounded box and the height of the bounded box as well. But in any case, it's just the four numbers. Okay. So then, what object detection that looks like is that now each row 
is not just the image and the objects you have. It's now each road identify a, in the object in the image. So for example, you can specify the image file name and the objects, the class, object class you have and the bound box is the full numbers of the object. So which means if you have few images, you may have 10 times more objects you have and each object is a training example you have. So for example, the largest scale uh, public data set is called Coco. Um, three years ago, if you search Coco, you get the first result is the data set, and nowadays you got the movie. Um, so so um, I do have, um, well, students asking to you, okay, train your network in Coco, and then hit down the movie, and oh, how, how I can start. <laughs> well, so the Coco data set have 80 objects. So this is, pretty daily life objects. That's more, more useful compared to ImageNet. Contains a lot of animals you never <laughs> saw that before. <laughs> um, also, there's less images. It's only, currently only have 3,000, um, 30, uh, 300,000 images. It's less compared to ImageNet, but in average, we have four objects in the image. So we have about around 1.5 million objects in this data set. Usually one million is a good, is a good number. Uh, one million size data set usually can do reasonable deep learning models. Uh, if it's too large, it's 10 million. Uh, if the full image net have 10 million images, it's kind of hard to train. If it's just 100,000 images or examples, well, it's pretty too small, you need to use fine tuning. So one million images is good. And Give a single GP machine take a, a few hours to a few days. That's uh, manageable. Okay. Then the the other concept is called the anchor box. Um, well, the name is pretty random, but you can. S the idea here is that how in overall detection algorithm works. Here, different to the classification, we want to predict the bounding box. What do you do here? Uh, algorithm usually first propose multiple regions. Each region we call the anchor box. For example, this, we have a picture here. We show uh, four anchor boxes centered at a single pixel. And each anchor box has a different size and a different width and height ratio. So the algorithm is gonna propose multiple anchor boxes. And then for each anchor box, we're gonna predict if this anchor box contains objects or not or just a background. If we predict it contains objects, then we're gonna to predict how to map this anchor box to the real, uh, the label, labeled, um, uh, the real actually bounding box. So this is one choose. So we only, because as four numbers, we just predict the offset, which is another four number to map, to transfer this anchor box to a bounding box. Okay, so different detec detection algorithms have different ways to propose all these anchor boxes and the given anchor box, how to predict the uh, labels, how to predict the class, how to predict object classes, how to predict uh, the offset. Okay, that, so, but in, in general, they are pretty works as this way. Okay, question. How many anchor boxes does the network usually propose? Is that a hyperparameter? Depends on algorithms. Um, for example, we're gonna talk about SSDs for each image it proposed 10,000 anchor boxes. Okay, for different algorithms, usually uh, uh, we're gonna talk about uh, fast RCM family. Um, it's also proposed thousands of anchor boxes, but do refinement to reduce to maybe hundreds. Okay, and even some uh, fast algorithms trying to reduce the number of anchors. You, you see that the more you propose, the coverage may maybe get, because the more you propose, the the likely you can cover all these objects. But the more you have, the more expensive uh, computation time you have. Okay, so this is a trade-off. Question? We don't have the true label for each box, but we have um, the label, this is the, so here, bounding box, we. So all the other things are boxes, but bond, by bounding uh, bonding box, we mean the ground truth, which is labeled by human, and the anchor box is just uh, proposed by algorithms. So then we're gonna talk about how to map anchor box into uh, the uh, ground truth, how to train that. Another question? Uh, what does predict the offset? What does that 
OK, so um, given the anchor box, you have four numbers to present the anchor box. There's four numbers. A bounded box has another four number. So you want to predict how to change this four number to another four number. We just the, the offset is the number. The, this anchor box plus the offset equals to the bounded box. All the bounded box for numbers minus the anchor box, you get the offset. Uh, offset. Yes, it's a, because it's a, it's a real number, it's we are doing regression uh, at the end. OK, any questions? Is a concept change, like the setup of the things. OK, uh, then, well, all these difficulties is on the boxes. Uh, we can uh, dive more for the boxes. Firstly, how to measure the similarity between two boxes? Well, in in classification, we, we know either it's true or false. But for boxes, we usually do is IOU, it's called in intersection over union. Um, where the idea here, we compute the intersection between two bounded boxes and divide it by the union of these two bounded boxes. So this is, we get the number between zero and one. Zero means the two bounded boxes not overlap anymore. Uh, um, um, any one, and one, zero or uh, one means they're identical to each other. So the closer to one, the more, simil uh, simi uh, the more similar you uh, have for these two boxes. So the IOU uh, is called on, well, it's a weird, weird name by the object detection community, is actually a special case of the Jacquard index. So given two sets, A and B, the index can be computed by the, se the, the set size of the intersection between set A and B and the size of the union of the set A and B. So if you think about the bound box, it's just a set of uh, pixels, and each pixel is an element on the set. You can think it's just an easy uh, application here. OK. The other thing that, yes, uh, during, during training, the algorithm proposed a bunch of anchor boxes, and then you need to get labels for this anchor box. So we need to map all these uh, labeled bound boxes to the anchor boxes. So during training, each anchor box is, is a training example. And we need to associate the objects with the anchor box, either as a background. So in bound box, we don't have background. But in anchor box, because we, we, we made random purpose, so maybe have nothing there. So it's, it's, it's just a, a special class, it's called background. And all you associate with the bounded box and associate with the objects. So then we're going to talk about how to associate with the bounded box. But you can see that we may generate a larger number of anchor boxes. And only a few of them contains the objects we have. A large amount of objects are just the backgrounds. And how to, so this is unbalanced the classification problem. How to make uh, it trainable is pretty hard. OK, so here let's see a typical way how to match anchor boxes to a bounded boxes. So each row presents an anchor box, and each column is a bounded box. So here we have, we labeled four bounded boxes, but we have nine anchor boxes. Usually anchor boxes are larger than, the, uh, we have more anchor boxes than the bounded boxes. So each element here is an IOU score of the anchor box to the bounded box, OK? Then what do we first do here? We find the largest score. For example, here is the, the largest score is the anchor 2 uh, with the bounded box 3. So then we assign bounded box 3 to anchor 2, which means um, the, this anchor box 2, we have the objects contains on the, on the bounded box, and the offset how to predict the offset is just the, uh, the difference between these two boxes. After we do that, we remove bounded box 3 and anchor 2 in the set. So we just mark it as white. So next time, we cannot consider all these LU values. Next, we're going to pick up the largest one in all these blue uh, cells, which is the anchor, anchor 7 map to bounded box one. This is the largest IOU we can have. Then we assign 
bounding box one to anchor uh, seven. Okay, then we remove both uh, one, three in for the bounding boxes from the set and also like two and seven for the anchor boxes. Then to s repeat that again to get a, a map bounding box four to anchor box five. We just repeat until no bounding box left. And the rest of the anchor boxes, we just label as back one. So we finish the labeling. Okay, question here? Question. How do you know how many bounding boxes to use? Well, you don't know. It depends, depends how, how, the, how they are labeled. So for example, you mean how many use? We're gonna use all of them. We're gonna use, are we gonna match all the bounding boxes to the anchor boxes? If you cannot map then, then the bond box you propose is probably not a good idea. But the bond box is various, like uh, maybe one image only contains two, or maybe some large, uh, if you serve a driving car, they're labeling 4K images, like 40, 4K videos, they have maybe 10 to uh, maybe 50 objects in the images. Okay. Mm. Then the other things like, now, in the prediction, each anchor box, we're gonna generate a one bond box pr a prediction. So, which means, and also the off offset, which means we maybe get a lot of very similar bond boxes here. For example, in this, in this doc, we generate, uh, this is th each uh, box is actually the anchor box with the offset, offset, which is very close to the real docs, but well, we have three predictions, and the numbers here, which means the probability. And the probability, the, the algorithm think it contains a dog. So we want to like, reduce all these uh, duplications here. A typical one is called uh, NMS, like long maximum uh, suppression. This is another term for, technical term for detections that um, is actually a simple algorithm. What we do is very similar to the one we had before. So what do we do here? Given a set of predictions, we pick up the, the one with the largest uh, probability score, which means I most of for sure it is a dog or it is a cat, depends. So for example, we're gonna pick up the blue one of dog equal to 0 0.9. And then we're gonna remove all these other predictions with the IOU larger than the threshold compared to the one I picked. For example, if I pick the theta equal to 0.5, you should I can remove all this, the other two dark uh, predictions here. I'll remove all of them and then select the largest one in the remaining and then remove the duplications. And then we repeat until either we select or remove all these predictions. So at the end, you can see that we only have two bounded boxes here. Okay, questions? Question. Uh, you mean what point nine means? So what is the theta? Oh, you mean for this particular um, uh, example? Yeah. I can show you in a, in a few, I don't remember, but I can show you. This is actually from the source code. Uh, probably 0 0.5, I think, here. Okay, so um, 